Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we discussed till the point uh, of resistance. That for a conductor to be a good conductor, the resistance should be minimum. And the best insulator is that whose resistance is maximum. Resistance is the property which distinguishes between a conductor and an insulator. Something you know. Another little basic video today. Uh, uh, let's uh, you know just uh, talk about the energy band theory or I say then let us talk about the physics of it right so what do we have is an atom consists of what an atom consists of a three ingredients and the three ingredients are electron proton and the neutron right yes where the proton and the neutron are in the nucleus of the atom and the electrons revolve around the nucleus in certain fixed paths called the energy levels or shells or orbits right yes now there is a force a force of what a force of attraction between the electrons the revolving electrons and the what and the protons of the nucleus so uh, and also the number of electrons you know are by the formula of 2n squared number of electrons in each shell where n is what n is the number of shell this you know now there is a force of attraction between the uh, positive uh, nucleus and the negative revolving electrons and that force is what that is the columbic force or the electrostatic force or the attractive force so columbic force which is what which is the electrostatic force and that is given by what that is given by the formula of course f is equal to uh, q1 q2 upon 4 pi epsilon naught r squared where q1 is the charge of the proton q2 would be the charge of the electron and epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space and r is the distance between them so let's suppose let's suppose we talk of a hydrogen atom if we talk about hydrogen atom and why am i talking about the hydrogen atom is because uh, it is the simplest it has only got a single proton and a single electron so if i talk about it has got no neutron right so if i talk about the proton in the nucleus and electron and i talk about the force in between these two so the force would be what so the charge of a proton is equal to the charge of an electron magnitude wise which is 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 coulombs right yes and the distance between the two which would be the uh, the distance between the nucleus and the first shell is let's suppose I take it in the order of femtometers I take it as 10 to the power negative 12 meter for a hydrogen atom so you put it in this formula so this would be what this would be 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 coulomb whole squared upon what 4 pi epsilon naught value is 8.85 into 10 to the power negative 12 and the distance is 10 to the power negative 12 whole squared you do the calculation you do this calculation this comes out to be around 2.3 or 2.6 Newton of a force so this is the force that I call over here is the binding force let's say or the attractive force or whatever but this is let's suppose the binding force and by binding force what do I mean is that this is the force that is keeping this electron bound to the nucleus this is keeping this electron bound to its parent atom right yes this is the innermost shell this is the innermost shell this is called the ground shell the innermost shell is called what innermost is called the ground shell whereas the this is not of our interest majorly our interest lies in the outermost shell our interest lies in the outermost shell which is called the valence shell this valence shell is the shell of our interest and you know from the energy band theory from the energy band theory that when we talk of the valence shell we talk of energy bands and what are those bands so you have a valence band 
you have a valence band over here and then you have what you have an energy gap and after that you have a conduction band you have a conduction band in between the two you have got a forbidden gap forbidden gap or band gap or forbidden energy gap or whatever it is and the amount of energy is represented by a capital E right yes which means if the electrons are in the valence band and no electron in the conduction band which means they are not available for conduction this is an insulator if all the electrons all electrons are in what in valence band implies what that this is an insulator whereas if you have electrons if electrons are present in the conduction band this would imply what that they are free electrons they are available for conduction so this material will act as a conductor right yes but there is one other thing if you have electrons in the valence band and you give it energy how much energy this e amount of energy and you shift you can shift it to the conduction band they would be available for conduction right yes so if e amount of energy is provided do i have space down here yes i have a little so uh, let me write over here if if e amount of energy is provided to electron in the valence band vb for valence band it shifts to conduction band cb for conduction band and is available for conduction and you can say that the material is now acting as a conductor right yes which means what that you had an electron over here you had an electron in the valence band you provided it this much of an energy that it surpassed this energy gap and it went to the conduction band so now that is available for conduction right yes what is that energy that energy is in the form of electron volts the main thing is you know the major uh, the main unit of energy is joules but over here in electrical terms we we write in terms of electron volt so one electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules right yes which means that if you want to go from joules to electron volts divide by divide joules by 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 so you'll get the equivalent electron volts and if you want to go from electron volt to joule you multiply the electron volts by 1.6 in 10 power minus 19 so you will get the equivalent joules of energy fine yes so uh, you can just let me know uh, if i tell you if i tell you that the velocity of an electron is what 1.6 uh, 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 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second and then uh, the the mass of an electron is you know is 9.1 or what let me just check over here yes it's 9.1 in 10 power negative 31 kg so you tell me the kinetic energy of electron in what in electron volts and in joules so in both of these you tell me and this is your homework for the comment section you let me know in the comment section All right yes so this is what I'm talking about that if I have an electron if I have an electron in the conduction band and I provide it an e amount of this energy and I shift it over here to the conduction band from the valence band what do i have now i have a free electron in the conduction band and over here now i have a vacancy of an electron and that is what that is a positive ion so which means this is now a free electron and over here i have got a what i have got a positive ion 
right yes so but a question the question is where does this energy come from where does this energy come from or what are the sources of this energy what what is this e where does it come from what are its sources so for that you need to watch the next video i'll continue with this in the next video over here just i will write the definition of the ionization potential or ionization energy ionization energy or potential so write down the definition the minimum amount of energy required the minimum amount of energy required to move an electron from valence band to conduction band so this is called what this is called uh, the ionization energy which means to free the electron the minimum amount of energy required to free an electron right or to make a, an insulator a conductor this is called the ionization energy till now you have seen the, to remove an electron from the valence shell of a gaseous of an isolated gaseous atom so this is one in the same thing over here i'm talking from the insulator and conductor perspective so i'm saying it like this that the minimum amount of energy required to shift an electron from the valence band to the conduction band so that it is available for conduction right yes but where is this energy coming from what are the sources of this energy so let me meet you in the next video for that and Till then, take care and do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.